way back during first term, we talked about uh, reactions and aqueous solution. And I gave you a set of rules called solubility rules. Essentially, they allowed you to decide if a compound in water would dissolve or not dissolve. And that's about it. Today, in the form of a pogle, we are going to be discussing solubility in greater detail. It turns out that some compounds are more soluble than other compounds. You can dissolve more of the solute uh, for one particular compound, maybe compared to another. We'll leave it to the Pogel to do the basics of defining solubility, but I want to give you a sense of what it might look like. For instance, if I looked at um, a solid like sodium chloride at a particular temperature, let's say at 20 degrees Celsius, its solubility could be reported in a very specific way. You can dissolve about 34 grams of NaCl in 100 grams of water at that particular temperature. That's known as its solubility, okay? This is scalable. What I mean by that is if I had 200 grams, then I could, uh, 200 grams of water, then I could dissolve 68 grams of sodium chloride. So I want to talk about a few things that aren't going to be covered by our Pogel um, in a little bit of depth, but nothing, uh, nothing too big. First thing I want to talk about is gas solubility. Gas solubility and solid, uh, particularly ionic sol sol solid solubility, are uh, quite different from one another. We talk about gas solubility, one of the main uh, things that affects uh, gas solubility is, is pressure. And pressure almost has no effect on, on the solubility of a solid. So if I tried to dissolve, you know, more than 34 grams of NaCl at 20 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water, it really wouldn't matter what the pressure is. Um, it could be high or low. I'm still going to dissolve about 34 grams. But for gas solutes, so something like CO2 is a great example. The pressure at which that gas is under is, is definitely going to impact how much of that gas actually dissolves. So if you think about uh, a soda bottle, for instance, when you open up that soda bottle, the very first thing that you hear is just kind of this rush of air uh, coming out of the bottle and bubbles forming in the, in the soda itself. That's actually not air, it's CO2 that is, um, is leaving the solution. And that is for a very good reason. When, once you open the bottle, you're decreasing the pressure that that solution is under. So a typical soda bottle might be under like three atmospheres of pressure. As soon as you open the bottle, it's under one atmosphere of pressure. What we see is, is that the higher the pressure is for a gas, the more soluble it, it can be or is going to be. It's literally like you're pushing gas molecules into solution. So if you take a look at these three diagrams, essentially what we're seeing going from here to here is we are decreasing the volume, right? And Boyle's law would tell us that that's going to increase the pressure of the gas, but it also forces more of those gas particles into solution when I push down on that gas, okay? So eventually, the solubility of that gas will increase as pressure increases. Opposite's also true. Most of the time, though, we're going to be talking about, instead of talking about um, gases, most of the time, 
we're going to be, or I should say, rather than talk about pressure, we're going to be talking about temperature and the effect temperature has on solubility. Let's talk about gases first, because I think it's easily understandable compared to uh, what we see with solids. So for gases, the solubility, if I look at this graph over here on the right-hand side, temperature on the x-axis and solubility on the y-axis, what I notice is that without fail, gases become less soluble as the temperature goes up. This makes sense to me. Here's why. As I increase the temperature on a solution, I'm given the particles in that solution more energy. And those gas particles have more energy. They're moving faster. They're more likely to escape from the solution. And so they don't stay dissolved and therefore their solubility goes down. On the other hand, if I look at solids on the right, uh, on the left side of this, this slide, same kind of graph, temperature on the x-axis, solubility on the y-axis. I've got a lot of things graphed here. They're all ionic compounds. And what we're seeing is, for the most part, the solubility of solids tends to increase with temperature. This was a question that was asked, I think, a little bit unfairly in your last Pogel. So, a couple of things. The first thing I want to note is that it's not uniform. In other words, if I look at something like NaCl, which is right here, its solubility does increase from the left side to the right side, but it's really just a slight increase. But if you take a look at something like KNO3, KNO3 starts off as not very soluble at all, at low temperatures and its solubility goes through the roof at high temperatures. So there's a huge effect on the solubility of, of, sol of that particular solid. On the other hand, I can even find some solids that become less soluble. But what I would say, good for your notes, is that for mo the most part, most solids become more soluble as temperature goes up but not all, and not all in the same way. So the question is why? And that's actually a very tough one to answer. What I would say is there are potentially a couple of effects going on. At higher temperatures, you're giving more energy to your solvent molecules. They may actually gain a little bit of space that allows them to dissolve more particles, but probably that, that is fundamentally a small effect. The, the bigger effect, I would say, is that for the dissolving process, many of these processes are endothermic. In other words, the solvent molecules need energy to break down the solids. And so as I raise the temperature, that kind of feeds energy into this breaking down process, it gives the solvent particles more energy to break down more of the solid. Um, but again, it's not uniform and it is um, not universal either. Some, some solids do not see that sort of uh, effect take place. So those are some bigger ideas I want to actually take this time, though, to um, look at solubility in greater detail in a group pogel, and we're going to talk about that when you come back to class. See you then.